Welcome back, everyone. We're here at the wonderful Pixel Core Studio in San Rafael, California, talking about motion. And we're going to be talking about orbiting. Yes, <laughs> orbiting and motion. Orbiting, yeah. Yes. So this gets back to somebody, a question somebody asked. In fact, I have it up. And if we switch to the screen right now, uh, Kanishka Biswas had asked this question on a Facebook forum where he had set up this design with several different outline circles. It looks like an orbit. Some, yeah, some different dots on He said, look, I need to animate the blue and red dots around the line which they are on. I tried keyframing, but it doesn't go around in circular motion. How can I do this? And I love this question because it speaks to one of motion's real strengths, which is behaviors. And the answer to his question is in the question, <laughs> uh, as it often is. So he, has, he says, I need to animate to orbit around the line. Oh wait, okay. there's a behavior well, called. Okay, so let's oh, let's get let's let's uh, let's not jump right to it. But sorry. We will. So one thing I wanted <laughs> to show is sorry. is he makes these dotted lines, these circles, and I want to show he did a lot of hard work here. It's not necessary, so I want to show some easier ways to do some of this, just to set the project I hope up. Hope he's going to watch this. I'll set this up <laughs> similar to this. So what I'm going to do to make those dotted lines, I'll just show you. I'm not going to build the whole thing from scratch, but I'm going to press C for the circle tool, circle tool. I'm going to hold down the Option and the Shift keys and drag out so that I get a perfect circle from the mm -hmm. center. Escape, F1, hooked arrow to center it, and then in the shape inspector, I'm gonna turn off the fill and turn on the outline and make it a little thicker. Now, but how do I make it dotted? I wanna make it dotted. Okay, so to make it dotted, instead of a solid brush tape, I'm gonna change it to an airbrush, and then I'm going to change the spacing because an airbrush is basically made of little dabs. Yeah. Okay, and something we've talked about before, yeah, but if yeah. I drag those dabs apart, we get dots. And I can also make those little wider so I can really see them. They're a little fuzzy by default. So to make them more crisp, I can open up the brush profile and drag this white opacity tag to the right to just give it a, them a harder edge. Right, it was mostly okay. just aliasing, anti-aliasing around the edge. Well, it's just giving a nice yeah. soft feathered yeah. edge, yeah. and which can be useful sometimes, right. but then I'm gonna bring the width back down. So that's tip number one, is a quick way to make any kind of dotted object is to use the airbrush type and play around with the brush profile there and the spacing. So the other thing is, if you wanna make ones of different sizes, if I hit Command D to duplicate this guy, you might think, oh, I'll scale down with Option, Command, and I'll scale down. And that works, but it also scaled down the size of the dots. If you don't want to scale down the size of the dots, what you can do instead is in the inspector, for the shape under geometry, is you change the radius, okay? So now I'm changing the radius of that circle, but I'm not affecting the size of the dots. Ah, and that can be really useful to keep something exactly the same. Otherwise, you're, you're struggling, because as you scale, everything is scaling. So this works a little bit better. Um, and the last thing in there is you can just see for the circle tool, tool shift, uh, shift option, drag, escape, F1, reset the transform parameters so it's centered and give it a color. And again, just in the shape tab, you can go and fill it with a color. Make it blue, like Earth. So ultimately, what you're going to end up is with this. Oh, I'm going to wow. switch back. Oh, wow, that's nice. So I just, I, you know, it, it takes, you can make this in, in just a couple of minutes pretty quickly. So I've got three circles here, and I've got these, uh, you know, green center planet, if you will, and the blue dot and the red dot. So the question is, let's go to the red dot. How do I make it move around that center point? And you could keyframe, but you've got to ask yourself, whenever you're using motion and you're thinking keyframes, maybe behaviors, it's right. always an option. Before I go there, I will show you one way to keyframe this, it's very easy. What I'm gonna do is, this little dot in the center of this red circle is its anchor point. It's right. a point around which an object scales or rotates. So one option might be to control click on that and choose anchor point, move that anchor point to the center of the composition, and it's a little hard to tell exactly where it is, which is why I don't recommend this method, but it's something you might consider doing. Hit Shift S to go back to the regular transform tool, and now this rotation handle is here. Ah. So now this, that object will rotate around the center point quite nicely. And you might wonder, well, how can I actually rotate it? You could set keyframes for rotation, but instead of doing that, what I'd recommend is you go to the Properties Inspector, and there's rotation. If I drag in the value field, we see it moves. That was the same as dragging the canvas as I just did. But rather than doing that, you could control click on rotation and choose to add a parameter behavior called rate. And then I'll crank up the rate amount. And if I play that, now it's rotating around and I can choose, I'll actually put a large negative rate amount and now it's moving around the circle. 
Nice. Okay, so that's one option, but I don't really like it because I don't know if I'm exactly centered. It takes a little bit of work to get there. So I'm gonna undo that and go back to the anchor point in the center. So instead, here's what's really cool. You're gonna use orbit now. Yeah, now we're gonna get to orbit. Okay, good. But I thought the other stuff's worth showing because it can okay, be really skip useful. Skip all the other step, just cut to this part. No, the other stuff's good, the other stuff's good. <laughs> so in the library, in behaviors, under simulations, uh, we have these different simulation behaviors and one of them is called orbit around. So I'm gonna drag that onto the red circle. I'm gonna bring up the heads up display, F7, and there's a source well. Okay, what do you want me to orbit around? Well, I want you to orbit around the green circle. So I'll drag that in there and it's done. <laughs> you know, now it's orbiting around the green circle. Nothing else to worry about, it just does it. And I can, uh, the, inf the influence I'm not gonna play with are the drag, but the strength will determine how fast it orbits around. And can you go past that parameter end? You can't do it here, but if you go to the inspector, okay. see, you know where you're yeah, going. Sorry. <laughs> Steve's, Steve's an expert at least on this. So I can increase the strength here to make it go faster, and it'll orbit as fast as I want. So I have full control over the speed. I'm only I'm getting slow playback right now for some reason. This really should play back in real HDMI time. HDMI probably. I think it's because we're recording the screen, yeah. But if we increase, check this out, if I get, add a little bit of drag, this is where I love behaviors. Now, this if I select the path so we can see the path, we can see that now this is not only orbiting because of the drag, it's, it's actually spiral. it's spiraling into the center. So you can create really interesting animations by playing around with the different parameters of the orbit around behavior. In this case, I'll select that drag and put it back to where it was at zero. So orbit makes it really easy. The last thing I'll mention is you can do all this stuff in 3D. You can see it says include X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And I won't set it all up here, but I will show you one more version that I made where oh, I've wow. got um, these objects in basically in 3D space where each of these flat circles has been told to point at the camera. You can see I have point at behaviors. And if I select a point at behavior, you can see the source in the heads up display is the camera. So it says, even though this is a flat disc, right. every time you see the camera, just always face the camera <laughs> and you'll trick the camera into thinking that it's a sphere. <laughs> so um, in fact, if we rotate, if I orbit the camera here, you'll see that it's those- just a cards and- Well, no, no, it stays, they keep facing the camera so they look like they're balls instead of discs as I move the camera <laughs> around, which is really pretty cool. And this, this ball here, I actually made with a piece of text um, that has a material applied as a piece of 3D text. So there's a lot of different options for doing this. Nice. So just some fun from the orbit around behavior, and hopefully that will give um, our friend, thank you very much for writing in this, Kanishka, because that was a great question, and um, behaviors. Make sure you post behaviors. the link when it's done here. Here's how you do it. It's yes. good, awesome. So with that said, uh, you can get a hold of us via our YouTube channel, and uh, we, we, read, we read every question that's posted up there, and perhaps one of your suggestions will turn into Mac break. We can't promise it, but maybe so. Anyway, check out Mark's excellent training on Ripple Training uh, webpage. He's got a, we have like 17 hours of motion training. <laughs> it's crazy. Binge watch, binge watch how to orbit stuff. Uh, check us out on Facebook, YouTube. Oh, I mentioned YouTube, uh, Twitter. And again, uh, thanks for your time watching another episode of Mac Break. We'll see you next week.